Welcome to That's Good Sports, I am Brandon. I hope all of the new subs coming in from Urinating Tree and Five Points vids aren't regretting their decision to give me a chance, Perna. Now I can't promise that you'll always like me, but I do guarantee our relationship will be just as fucked up as the one between Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande. And trust me, it will probably also end similarly. Today, I'll pick all of the NFL Week 14 games with the kind of intelligence that the XFL, Alliance American Football League, and now the newly formed Freedom Football League, founded by Ricky Williams and Terrell Owens, have exhibited by separately trying to compete with the NFL by first competing with each other. Brilliant game plan, guys. Let's get sports. Sure, subscribe here if you haven't, and click the notification button if you wanna know when I make videos. Also, this episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek, one of the best ticket buying apps out there. Use my promo code, that's good, and you will save $20 off of your first ticket order at SeatGeek. If you're looking to get tickets to playoff football games, now would be the time to take advantage of my promo code, that's good. Just a heads up if you want to save a little money and go to a football game. All right, we've got the Baltimore Ravens versus Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs are six and a half point favorites over under 51 and a half. Somehow I could see this game going one of two ways. The Ravens go into Arrowhead, run their ball control offense, limit the Chiefs possessions and sneak away with the close win. Something like 20 to 17 Ravens. That or the Chiefs beat them 45 to seven. Lamar Jackson is three and zero in his first three weeks, surviving a vicious kick to the face from his own teammate. You know you've got a good head on your shoulders when your left tackle kicks you in the face and he's the one who gets hurt. How'd you get hurt? Uh, I kicked my quarterback in the face. Well, serves you right. Serves you right, dick. If the Ravens beat the Chiefs with Jackson and Flacco sitting on the sideline, grooming that sweet unibrow, there's no chance they ever go back to Joe Cool. Jackson hasn't had good passing numbers, but neither did Flacco his rookie year, and they made it to the AFC Championship game. This is going to be the second game for the Chiefs without Kareem Hunt, and you could tell that it made a little bit of a difference last week. That and the fact that their defense is so atrocious, they gave up 33 points to the Raiders. The only thing crazier than a first year quarterback breaking the passing touchdown record is me taking the Ravens in an upset. Colts versus Texans. Texans four and a half point favorites over under set 50. The Texans started 0-3 and have now reeled off nine wins in a row. The Houston Rockets have lost 12 games since the Texans started winning. All streaks ended for the Colts on Sunday when Jacksonville beat them 6-0. Their win streak, Andrew Luck's three touchdowns per game streak, and my streak of giving a shit about the Colts. As a Broncos fan grasping at playoff hope, I have to root against the Colts now. The Texans are an all-around better team than Jacksonville. Plus, Whitney Merciless has become uh, nominated for the Walter Payton's Man of the Year Award. A nice honor, even though he has no chance in hell of winning it after J.J. Watt won it last year for raising $37 million for Hurricane Harvey relief. You'd have to bring Whitney Houston back from the dead to top that Whitney who plays for Houston. Your consolation prize is extending your win streak to 10. Texans. Saints versus Buccaneers. Nola, eight point favorites, over under set at 55. Some way, somehow, after roughly 600 quarterback changes and some of the most offensive defense in the NFL this year, the Bucks are still in the playoff picture at five and seven. I would say they're in the hunt, but I don't think that phrase is politically correct anymore. Thanks for nothing, Kareem. This is also being dubbed the Devontae Harris revenge game by Tampa corner Devontae Harris, who was cut by the Saints this preseason. The Bucks are coming off their most complete game last week, and the Saints are coming off their worst, losing to the Cowboys last Thursday night. And even though it feels like that happened 10 lifetimes ago, possibly back when 41 was still in office and when 14 was still on the field, the Bucks did actually beat the Saints in New Orleans all the way back in week one. 
14 weeks ago. 1 4 4 1 4 1 4 1 4 1 4 1 4 4 1 1 4 1 4 This is the 1 4 1 game, and all it can mean is that Fitzmagic will finish this game for Tampa Bay. If Tampa does win, maybe it saves Dirk Cutter's job. If he does get fired, he should replace the R in his first name, as I believe I've said before, to become Dick Cutter. Talk about a coach who can intimidate his opponents and his players. Do what Dick Cutter says, or you know what happens. You know exactly what happens. Patriots at Dolphins, New England, seven and a half point faves, 47.5 over under. For some reason, the Patriots always tend to play poorly in Miami. Maybe it's that Tom Brady can smell the elderly and it reminds him of his own mortality. Or maybe the TB12 diet causes you to shit your pants in humid weather. Or maybe Tom cheats on the TB12 diet with the South Beach diet. Either way, Jay Cutler's only great accomplishment, besides marrying way up, was beating Tom Brady by seven points last December in Miami. Xavier Howard has picked off four passes in the last two weeks, and he picked off Tom Brady twice last season. Unfortunately, Adam Gay said Howard is week to week with a knee injury and may miss the game against New England. So the Patriots could finally catch a break. God knows they don't just need one, but they truly deserve one. Personally, I don't think it's enough that Gronk, Edelman, James Devlin, Sony Michelle, and Josh Gordon all got fully healthy at the exact same time. Or that outside Eric Rowe and Jeremy Hill, part-time players at best, I don't know any of the fucking guys on their injured reserve list. That's not enough. And I think Josh McDaniel should be allowed to illegally tape his opponents in the shower again for the Patriots. Then, maybe then the Pats will finally get a fair shake in the rigged league. Pats win in Miami. Panthers versus Browns, Carolina two point favorites over under 47 and a half. If Baker Mayfield or Nick Chubb want to continue to be considered offensive rookie of the year candidates, they need to handily beat the Panthers team that has lost four in a row. Proving the worst thing you can do as a franchise is cut CJ Anderson, winless since his release. Give me the Browns at home, Baker plays better when everyone thinks he sucks. Falcons vs Packers, Green Bay five point favorites over under 50.5. Mike McCarthy is gone. Dan Quinn shows us exactly what it's looked like for the Falcons trying to get wins this season. And Aaron Rodgers is going to show the world how much Mike McCarthy was holding him back. Packers win by 10. Giants versus Washington Redskin Potatoes. Giants three and a half point favorites over under 41. Mark Sanchez will start after Colt McCoy also broke his leg, which I sort of predicted. I don't really want to see Colt McCoy hurt but I want Sanchez in the game. Thanksgiving, November 22nd, 2012. Six years ago to the exact day, Mark Sanchez infamously gave us the gift that keeps on giving, the butt fumble. The booty fumble, the badonka donk fumble, the ass fumble, the crack fumble, the dirty Sanchez fumble, the sweet cheeks fumble, the derriere fumble, the dad ass fumble, the big bottom boys fumble, the bouncy Bilbo Baggins fumble. I don't feel good about that. I think the Giants are the better team heading into this game, but Alex Smith is not doing well after his surgery. He's battling an infection now and may require more surgery. And since I like Alex Smith and I really do hope he gets well, I will pick Washington out of fucking respect for Alex Smith. Get better, my man. Lions versus Cardinals. Lions three point favorites over under 40.5. I'd like to congratulate these two teams on bringing us the least important game of the week in a battle amongst the least impressive players in the NFL. Now I typically root for the underdogs, but both of these dogs just need to be put down because they're infested with rabies and worst of all, first year head coaches. Lions win, I guess. Cincy Bengals versus LA Chargers. LA 14 point favorites over under 47.5. The biggest news of the week, of course, was that Phillip Rivers is expecting his ninth child which means that between he and his wife and his children, he could field an entire offense of Rivers. Somehow, despite most of the offensive line being between zero and 10 years old, they would probably still fall start less than the Chargers actual offensive line. But then again, it's only a false start if they call it, right? 
I know Rivers is rich, but the only college he will be able to afford to send his kids to is the one Russell Okun attended. Russell Okun, Wakanda Tech. Rivers should be careful, though, not to allow any of his family to get close to Vontez Perfect, whose presence alone destroys nature's beauty like Isengard in Lord of the Rings. Hugh Jackson, then, is like Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, he's got love in his heart, but he hurts everything he touches. In fact, all things beautiful are dying in Cincinnati. R.I.P. A.J. Green season. The Chargers are the biggest favorites of the week for good reason. The Bengals are bad, and without their best players, all two of them, I'm taking L.A. Eagles versus Cowboys. Dallas, three and a half point favorites over under 44. The biggest upset of the week is that this is not a primetime game. It seems somewhat obvious that after beating maybe the best team in the NFL last week in the Saints, the Cowboys are going to come back and lay an egg against a division rival that could be getting hot at the right time. And by getting hot, I mean handily beating Washington once Mark Sanchez entered the game. Darren Sproles will be back for his second straight game, doubling his streak this season of consecutive games, going from one back in September to two. He had four carries last week for 22 yards and a touchdown. I'm hoping he somehow stays healthy and leads Philly to a win over Dallas. Darren Sproles shuts up Skip Bayless is what we are all rooting for. However, I think Dallas wins. Philly beating Washington is the equivalent of me leading the team in rebounds in wheelchair basketball. Steelers versus Raiders. Pittsburgh 10 and a half point favorites over under 51. Now this feels like an easy win for the Steelers, but it turns out that the Steelers play some of their shittiest football at the Coliseum. They've lost their last two games in Oakland, and the Raiders are one of just four AFC teams with an all-time winning record versus Pittsburgh. The others being the Broncos, the Jaguars, and big surprise, the fucking Patriots. Now there was a report this week from Ben Albright that it is actually Raiders owner Mark Davis and not John Gruden that was responsible for trading uh, Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper. Knowing Davis is the least wealthy owner in the NFL, I can definitely picture Mark being an evil crime boss, plotting this all from the back room of a P.F. Chang's. He's got a bowl of chow mein in his hands, a bowl on his head, and is calling the shots while Gruden has to take all of the blame. A job I would happily do as well for a hundred million dollars. The tell-all book John Gruden can write once his contract expires will be a bigger hit than Fifty Shades of Grey. Shit, coaching the Raiders is like partaking in BDSM anyway. Fifty Shades of Silver and Black, the John Gruden story. I predict a big win from Big Steelers. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? Rams at Bears, LA three-point favorites, over under 51 and a half. The sad thing is I spent longer than I should have wondering who would win in a fight between a bear and a ram. All I know is that I've been killed by both multiple times in Red Dead Redemption. Fortunately for the Bears, it looks like they'll have the services of Mitch Trubisky for the first time in three weeks. It seems like a cruel joke to have to come back from an injury only to face Aaron Donald and Ndamukong Sue, but that's life in the NFL. Playing quarterback against two teams in a row, like the Vikings and Rams, is like stepping on a series of rakes a la Sideshow Bob. And as much as I enjoy watching Mitch kissing Rake's Trubisky play, I don't believe the Bears defense will slow down the Rams offense. Rams. Vikings versus Seahawks. Seattle, three point favorites, over under 45 and a half. Adam Thielen is the only Viking I currently respect because he had the balls to tell Bill Belichick to fuck off. The rest of the team shit the bed against the Patriots. You were one of the last teams I had hoped could hand Tom Brady a loss, and you let me down, Minnesota, and now I have to pick the Seahawks to beat you, which makes me nearly as sick as watching your performance last week. This game continues the trend of former pissed off Seahawks facing their old team. All Seattle knows this year is revenge games, facing guys like Richard Sherman, Marshawn Lynch, Golden Tate, Deshaun Sheed, Jimmy Graham, Luke Wilson, Brandon Meebane, and Russell Okun. I can't wait until Earl Thomas faces them next season at some point, hopefully, but will Tom Johnson and Sheldon Richardson's hate for them be enough to carry the Vikings to victory? 
No, I already said I'm picking this fucking Seahawks. And those are all of your week 14 NFL game picks. Uh, all right, I won't lie about it. I just totally forgot about this game and now I'm making up for it with a voiceover. I'll take the Bills to win at home. And I do want to congratulate Jerry Hughes for proving to the world that refs can't call players bitches. Oh, call me a bitch, though. I'll catch you, nigga. Trust me, I'll catch you. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please share this video with all of the people on Earth. Uh, if you want to watch more football videos, click one of the videos on the screen right now. And Will Keys and I do a podcast every Thursday. That's today. Second channel, That's Good Podcasts. Or it's on iTunes, Podbean. It's called the That's Good Sports Podcast.